gotcha. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> We're here, here at beautiful The Dome at America Center in St. Louis for the round 13 of the Monster Energy Supercross and the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Track Walk. And welcome, Adam Antonap. And yep. you, my man, you are not only doing the track walk with me, and thank you for taking the time, yep. but you are double duty tonight. You're yeah. doing the race, so you're yeah. racing again. Yeah, I'm excited to be back here in St. Louis. Um, as we start walking down this start straight, you know, it's cool to see these guys with these tractors. They have these new um, turn up tools where it actually fluffs up the starting the starting line, which makes it really, really grippy for us. But the first thing that I'm noticing is it's definitely a short start, Brock. Um, that's something that's going to play into my advantage, especially with the three start deal. Uh, with a shorter start, I don't have to shift as many times. And those guys on those, you know, that are only weighing 150 pounds won't get away from me. So it's pretty awesome to see a short start for me. Um, but coming into this first corner, what do you think this first section is going to be? Well, look, we can look back. First and foremost, we almost forgot to talk about this soil here. I mean, oh, let's talk geez. about this yeah. soil. You talk about the new tools to be able to till it up and get just a little bit of fluff on the start. Again, the starting line's a little bit forward from the end zone part of the stadium. There's actually two lanes of track behind it. So as Adam mentioned, it's a little shorter. They're doing a little practice, checking out the gate, making sure it's working. They're always testing it beforehand. They yep. tested it also yep. yesterday. No, no, no need to have a, a malfunctioning gate here. But this dirt is just fantastic. Every rider you talk to always brags and talks and just rants and raves about the dirt here at St. Louis. Just the whole Midwest soil. It's so good for farming and everybody knows that. No rocks in it. There's just fantastic conditions. You see our points leader Eli Tomac looking back, kind of seeing what line he wants here coming into this really wide corner but this dirt let's talk about this is actually new dirt this year came from the same pit where they dug out the old dirt but just a little bit different i think with the the soil yeah you know one thing i think why we love this soil so much brock is that it doesn't rut up too bad and it creates a little bit of fluff but then it never gets too dry you know that's that's one of those things that we absolutely hate as riders when it gets really really slick or very, very rutted. So yeah. coming into this first section, I did notice one thing different, Brock, that we can talk about. Yeah, this yeah. on press day was completely rolled over. As you can see where Brock's at right now, it's definitely lower. On press day, it was like that all the way across. So it looks like what Dirtworks did was they built up this inside so they could give us another option in this rhythm section. Yeah, to take the riders off rhythm, especially if it gets a little bit ruddy or uh, the faces of the jumps, it's always nice to have that ability to switch your rhythm up so that if a jump gets real rutted across the face, then you switch your combo to where you're not having to land in the face of that jump. So yes. it gives the people options, hopefully it makes more lines, more passing, and that's what they're after here for good racing. Yeah, and it should make more lines because as you can see, you're going to want to double up over this, which um, this is going to be difficult, but what it's going to do is it's going to set you on the inside on that start corner, which if you watch a little bit of press yesterday, they were going really, really wide to try to get this three onto this tabletop. So getting over this and staying inside and then stepping onto this and stepping off is going to be a huge difference, especially if you don't have to go all the way outside. Um, the other thing that you could do is double over and then seat bounce over the tabletop and get to the back side of that, which would set you up for a three and then table over single out. Um, and then the other option line was just to double table over single and then quad is what we seen those guys doing yesterday. Well, you see where Eli Tomac, he's just going over the rise right there of the table, but you see this is a much bigger knuckle as we call it on the end of that table yes. right there. They're actually letting these riders, that's a full, oh man, probably a foot, foot and a half knuckle on that. Usually they, give them, they usually give them four to six inches. But yes. That, that's a big combo right here. So I think one of the things, Brock, that they were talk, they want to see is us actually maybe triple onto the tabletop from the outside and then seat bounce over that tall one somehow and get three off. I think that's going to be very, very difficult, but they did actually, I talked to the Dirtworks guys and that tall one in the middle that you can see those guys standing on right where Eli's at actually, they took a little bit off of that. They took about six inches off. So it's obviously a little different from press day, but we will see what happens. Yeah, it was, uh, it was fun watching the press day and some of you guys that, uh, watch a lot of social media there was a little mishap of this section coming up here uh, yep. for the number 51 bike yesterday that was uh, quite interesting I think he had a little mechanical possibly a chain broke and, yeah uh, no the chain actually definitely did break and what happens is 
you know, when you hit something that this, that's this massive, you know, you take a look at this lift, you are going high in the air and you're just coming up, you know, super high and the bike weighs about 220 pounds and you're coming down on that tabletop to flat and then you have to step off. That's putting a lot of G-forces on that chain and on that rear shock. So what happened is they landed on that thing, Barsha did, and it was just too much pressure, you know, maybe like you said, a malfunctioning part or something and the chain just happened to snap. So that's unfortunate, but I think he's totally fine and should be racing this weekend. Well, one thing you were talking about, just putting a lot of force on the bike, and we look back at this St. Louis, this this uh, dome here. A lot of a lot of crazy stuff has happened here in the past in the history. <laughs> I remember back in 2006, it won a championship that came down to only two points between James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael. And this particular race, if you look back at the points, yeah, Ricky got one point finished dead last he wow. had a crash in the first corner and i think he only made one lap i think he had a shock break uh -huh. something, which is something, something you weird. never happened yeah. and then james while running third i think he fell and back in the days when they didn't have electric starters yeah and uh he ended up taking almost a full lap to get his bike refired so he ended up going only away with four points and wow. you think about a championship <laughs> by the end of the year it only came down to two points in las vegas that's and insane. you think that st louis was such a deciding factor in that particular one and then also and, you know unfortunately in 2010 i think you know mm -hmm. ryan villapoto who was the championship contender mm -hmm. he ended up breaking he had the leg that huge yeah, crash i remember crash that here. And uh, so there's been a lot of different things that have happened in St. Louis. Yeah, so there's definitely some history here, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely, no question about it. So I'm, what you were talking earlier about this rhythm section when you were saying what they want us to do and yeah. the, the Dirtworks crew, they really do. They watch press day very, very closely. And it's pretty scientific when they're looking at the lips and they're looking at the you know pitch of the jumps and they're saying, well, if we steepen it up, they can go a little higher, not so far. Exactly. If we lower it, maybe pitch it a little less, they can yes. go farther. So they're definitely trying. But the key factor that you said, us, meaning you. <laughs> and I'm glad it's you and not <laughs> me having to do this, but we're all going to be so excited to watch the seven deuce deuce race tonight. So, yeah. Are you feeling it? Yeah, I'm feeling it. I love this place. I've always had, you know, good vibes here and and i think that's just because of the dirt you know it's just a happy place for me when you're hooking up and you're getting traction on great dirt it's never a bad day <laughs> little te uh, teammate yeah, love little there. Teammate hey, love. are you happy to have your teammate back out there come on friend <laughs> partner in crime that's yeah. right so <laughs> so yeah so we're actually there. brock <laughs> we're actually gonna land on the back side of this i think uh -huh. um and or other option is step off but as i was watching press too you know this is a big step off this is a far step off and when you were seeing these guys, what my point is, is when you jump this step off, you got a lot of speed because you got to go so far. So it ended up this little outside line behind us right here. This outside line ended up being very, very fast. So you see this outside right here? Right here, I'm going to, yeah, I'm, this right here, I want to get down nice and low here and I'm going to show this. This is two weeks in a row we've seen off camber in Supercross. We haven't seen last week or last, last race in Seattle. Yep. And we had the big off-camber corner. It took them a little while in press day to kind of figure it out. And then in practice, they had to modify a little bit. Yesterday, they had this one pretty dialed. The inside line developed a nice little berm. Yep. The outside, big berm, high speed. These guys, Tomac, of course, and all the guys that love to carry that speed were out here. And then the, the, the finesse riders like Marvin Muskin yes. comes in. I see him, not, instead of entering the turn way out there, he comes. And right here, he just does one quick pivot right here at yeah, the so, firm and then came back across. So Brock, to explain what you're talking about, he landed on the back of the tabletop, right. jumped off that single and landed right here, hit the berm and just apexed. So that was an interesting yeah. line. Definitely. So you think about that, using that, landing this as, this, to us, this is just an off camber, but he was just using it as a nice down slope. Boom, real fast pivot off that berm and head right towards the exit of the corner instead of going all the way outside. Very clever move, something we do see from a guy like Marvin Muskin, who's definitely a, a, he's a clever rider. He yeah, a lot no. of good lines, typical, typical of the French racers. Yes, he definitely finds those lines that nobody else sees, and he finds the lines that are very, very smooth and don't have any ruts in them yet. So right here, as we see Adam climb to the top of this big old school over under jump that we're starting to see a lot more of. But you notice the, the ruts in the face. They did smooth it out. But yesterday, this during press day had quite a few ruts. The inside really almost has no rut. I don't know if they're trying to entice somebody to go over there. 
Okay, you got it. Good call. The 50 C or the electric KJS <laughs> class. The little kids have to make that thing up because this that's a big jump for them to go up and over, and certainly don't want to make that one. And so here, this jump got a lot of ruts in it. They're trying to keep the guys from jumping too far, but it is. And we're I'm going to make a run up and my co co-host there, Adam, and Shane's going to walk around the easy side. <laughs> I had to take the. the Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Got to make it to where the kids. So, keep. Brock, one of the coolest things about these over unders is you get a big, huge sight of what the track's like. You know, so when I'm jumping this jump, I'm looking at this triple, and I can see the landing. And what's so cool about being a professional, and I'm sure you know, if you can see the landing of the triple, you know exactly how to time it. Well, the, so that makes it just so much easier. Yes, I. I often go out on the track walks that are what the promoter track. <laughs> go out on the track walks for the promoter later on walk you know sometimes walk some dunlop dealers and other people around and the one thing everybody comments that they had no idea that it's so blind <laughs> like most people haven't ridden a professional level supercross track yes and these jumps the rider only sees a wall of dirt and some seats and maybe some stadium lights and, a, and maybe if they're wanting they scoreboard but you don't know where you're gonna land and then you know 60 65 feet later you're landing every lap within a few feet and people yeah. don't realize how much skill that takes yeah it takes a lot a lot of skill and that's what you know that's why we practice so much we practice five days a week and uh, we race on the weekends and we try to be the best that we possibly can be because we have to be sharp for this supercross stuff but one of the big things that i'm seeing right here brock i'm seeing a passing zone and why i see that is you have this tabletop right and then you have this triple this looks like a good place to throw a scrub and then all of a sudden you have all this room right here like if you guys can really see this you know this is a big open 180 degree corner yep. so if you're landing on the outside you know around here look at how much space you're leaving open into that turn yeah i mean that's a huge turn so i think this is definitely going to be a spot where you're going to see a lot of passes so like right here like for instance you're landing and i come in and i get a little bit of a scrub and i just get yep. a half a bike on that's you. it i control the corner and right here you're coming in and you're like okay i'm trying to turn and i can do i I really can just put you where I want. I, yes. I can push you up high. I can square you up. And we've saw, you know, we've seen a lot of that. I mean, last yeah. week, last race at Seattle, we talked about that corner at the finish line. We saw a similar situation. It was a little yep. bit tighter corner, but we, you know, and you particularly, we yeah. you called it out. We interviewed Cooper Webb in that corner, and that ended up being a, a, a corner. A crucial that, corner. Yeah, we saw <laughs> Michael Moseman and, and, and yeah. Tristan Craig get together there, and it was a critical corner. We yeah. kind of, you kind of knew it. I knew it. Yeah. And this one right here is going to be a great passing zone, like just as you said. So coming into this section, um, pretty simple, basic, just triple, triple. <laughs> I love how I say basic, Brock. You know, <laughs> you look at these jumps; they're like four foot high. They're definitely a little taller singles when I'm looking at them, and it's looking really peaky, but unfortunately this is probably the basic most basic section of the track you know you're just kind of coming out of the corner we're up three three into that next one might be a couple options like something you might want to do brock is you know if if you are thinking of passing which we are you know get a two three one just to make sure if you do that block pass if you do that block pass you can still kind of triple yeah it's you know no question about it you see the Rockstar Husky team right here. They're checking it out too. You got Malcolm yep. Stewart there, RJ Hampshire. RJ, what are you thinking, man? Good. Yeah? Good. Good. Like it? <laughs> All right. My guy RJ's out of here. He's like, I'm <laughs> he's going, like, man. He's like, I'm out. Yeah. All right. It's all good. We'll Looking grab some good. other guys. Adam's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's got it handled. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you're just going to go triple, triple here. But like I said, there might be some other options here just in case, you know, you have to slow down too much to make a pass. And also right here, let's check out this Dunlop hay bale. You see this Dunlop hay bale right here? Unfortunately, this was where Cameron McAdoo took himself out right here. So all McAdoo did was just go a little bit wide. He landed right here on this tough block, yep. and there you go. That's the end of your season, and that's how quick it can happen in Supercross, unfortunately. Yeah, you get cross-rutted, and you get offline, and next thing you know, you're on the edge. They have to have some sort of tough block there. you got a wall of dirt because the track lane is right there, 
and yeah. they're trying to put as much track as they possibly can yeah. on the floor that they have to work with. Yes. But there also has to be some exterior lanes for access for the medical units. We talk about that. So there's more to the flow. I mean, you obviously have to have cables and wiring and, and, and just different. Yeah, and this has nothing to do with, you yeah. know, um, dirt works or anything. You know, yeah. Cameron just made a mistake. He knows where the hay bales are. He just went a little bit too wide yeah. one lap or got a little bit cross threaded because yep. one of the interesting things about this track, Brock, is that, you know, it doesn't rut up super bad, but actually what it does is it kind of gets like a little half moon groove in the face. Yep. So you can't really see where the rut is sometimes, unfortunately. You'll catch a little bit of an edge and I guarantee you that's all that happened to Cameron. Yep, no question. And unfortunately, again, collarbone or that's what, at least what was reported. When you talk about these sections and you realize, I just look back, Seattle was another one. They had an entire length of the stadium. I, it, it, had, it was probably 100 to 110 yards. I mean, so you're talking 300 plus feet. Yeah. And the riders were literally triple. They had a triple and a quad and a triple. Yeah. They were touching down two times between a rhythm of 11, 12 jumps. Here, you're covering all that distance from the Dunlop berm to here. And once you leave the face of the first jump, you're only touching the one yeah. other time before you're landing up, here, Kent? right getting ready for the corner here under this, the under the over under bridge. So yep. I just amazing what what can be done nowadays on the modern motorcycle, no question. So coming out of this corner right here, press day yesterday, we got to see some fun riding. They were turning left here. They didn't allow them to use this, but in the real race, they're heading right across in front of the starting line, as you see right here, heading into some dirt that's not normal for the, uh, the St. Louis area, but it's a, a, some beach sand right here. They must have robbed the local sand pit or a local golf yeah, course straight bunk, up. sand bunkers or something. I don't know. But hey, Jet, can we grab you for a sec? Yeah. Just walk with us, just nice right. and smooth. Um, <laughs> so what do you think of this sand section? Like when you come up to a sand section, are you happy about it? Are you sad about it? Do you just not want to get, you know, roost in your goggle? What's your... What's your take on a sand pit? I mean, it's nice, something different. You don't want to follow no one going into it because, yeah, like you said, you get absolutely sprayed. Yep. Um, it's, I, I don't know. It's kind of, the hard thing about that is making it even on both sides, like, because it's so hard to make a split section of sand because it's so soft. Like, this is probably going to end up out there. For sure. Yeah. So you're talking about making it even. Uh, this, what, I didn't see this wave here yesterday, but now they have a wave of bumps on the inside to slow it down, as Jet was mentioning, trying to entice people to also take the outside line. So, you know, again, you don't want to follow somebody in there because no. you're just going to get... But I'm pretty sure by the end of one of the practices, that line's going to end up out here. Yeah, yeah. with, yeah. with that... comes in and blows it out. Well, with that sand too, there's actually like a little berm behind it that's yeah. made out of actual dirt. So I think that'll help a lot. Yeah. So look, cool. look, yep, looking at it, you're like, I'm uh, keep walking. Hey, yeah, later, man, Jack, take care, Jay. Good so luck much tonight, for your time. Man. Yeah, we got a guy there that wants to wrap up a championship there, and we got another guy that wants another win here. Yep, absolutely. That's for certain. What's going on, Chase? What's up, kid? What's going on? How are you? We ya? just talked to your teammate. He said he he said he hates the sand. He crashes <laughs> all the time in it. What do you think? I don't know. He didn't I'm, really I'm, say I'm that. I'm on a, I have a mix feeling about it yeah, yeah. totally. it doesn't look that, that bad though i think it has dirt underneath of it so. yeah i think it's good what's your pros and cons um well What's it's it? one line usually yeah so that's a problem and it's not bad if they don't have anything built in like last year they were building like rhythm sections in it yeah so not not into that <laughs> yeah, yeah no it's all totally. yeah they got a little wave wave bump or two in there but uh we'll see what happens so there. as we move on to this next yeah, you feeling good good luck good. tonight yeah, chase all right man see if the number 23 get a win tonight maybe let's see what hey, happens bro. Yeah, yeah, you already know what's up. <laughs> All right. Oh, so we got a nice Honda hay bale right in the middle of the track. Yeah. I'm sure the dirt works guys are going to move this. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah like this is very, very off camber right here, Brock. Yeah, another one. Man, we've got two in one track. That's uh, something. This corner yesterday was kind of under, a under, little bit under wraps. St. Louis Riders beating yeah. about eight minutes. Yep. Eight so. Okay, so what we're looking at right here on the inside, um, there's going to be a big rut that develops, you so know, you, hands down. You see where Chase is walking right there, and he's definitely slipping around and sliding. They put some water on it, no question about it. This is yep. like, you know, they talk about cake batter or whatever, the dirt. It's uh, it, it, it's a little looser and I guess get more, cr not crumbly, it just is softer. It's more powdery. Yeah, it almost has before. like a little bit of sand in it. Right, right. You so know? they have to put some moisture on it, but it's going to hold the moisture pretty much all night. But you're yeah. talking about this inside line here, and you see the inside knoll there. Yeah. That's going to develop a little rut 
berm up against that little knob there. So totally. they're going to keep the riders from crossing over to the outside, which yeah. is really what they want. They want, a, yeah. they want two lines there. Yeah. And the, and the hard part, uh, Shane, come and zoom in on this. You know, one of the things that's such a big risk is this right here. Um, as you can see, this tough block has a little chunk out of it. And without a doubt, that's from a foot peg. So one of the hardest things about these insides is it's a little risky sometimes because this rut sometimes gets right here. You know, it's right next to that hay bale. And if your peg gets hooked on it, it'll grab your rear tire and it'll kind of get you out where that outside, you know, you have no shot of that happening. So you have to be very careful and precise on this inside line and nice and slow and smooth. And then the outside, you can kind of rail, but you're obviously cutting off a lot of track on this inside, Brock. So to talk about how that develops, Adam, I mean, when the first riders come through, there's no berm or rut here. So yeah. they go pretty darn tight to it because they're not leaning over far, very far. Exactly. And as the rut gets deeper and deeper, you obviously can go a little faster, lean over a little further and further. And there next you thing go. you know, your handlebars and yep. your parts of your And foot this right here. Right here. Boom. Honestly, this thing really, they ought to rotate this a little bit because this is going to start catching some of those grippy foot pegs. So, yeah, absolutely. But that's what, how it happens. And, and as the berm gets deeper and deeper, the guys start leaning over farther and farther. And next thing you know, handlebar into the, into the tough block. So this next section, pretty basic. I would say the fastest way to go here is probably just outside 2-2. Um, two two. Yeah, there two two. Seven, yeah, two seven, two. two two. Yeah. Uh, inside, it looks like you're gonna have to double single, which obviously is, is never really fun when you have to jump into the corner off a single because you're kind of just landing down, and then it disrupts the suspension, makes the corner a lot harder. So outside here, two two, and then on off into that whoop section. Okay, we're gonna coming up to the coming up to the whoop section here in a minute. So this is a good one right here. Come in here, as you said, you want to make sure you get this up on and uh, and one thing that i was looking at here yesterday brock this off is very very far so it's going to be a difficult off it's not going to be easy so if you look down right here there's no knob nothing they're not giving the riders any no. lift right here and you said it's a pretty good distance there it's further but with nothing to lift off of it's all going to be the corner a, speed yeah, right here corner speed little burp of the throttle and a lot of lift with the a <laughs> lot of muscle yes but the nice thing is is if you do get this off clean man you're gonna have a lot of speed coming into this dunlop whip section i think we need to get a radar gun honestly <laughs> and put it right here a little radar gun and find out who enters the whoops of the most oh speed. that'd, that'd be, be kind of cool. cool to do i'd be putting my money on either jason anderson or eli tomac <laughs> that would <laughs> exactly. be my bet but i always come in really I always come in pretty fast. This is definitely one of my biggest strengths just because yeah. I'm a bigger guy in general. Uh -huh. um, I feel like I can handle the whoops very, very well. These are actually very, very laid down. But, you know, as we talked about, one of the biggest things with this dirt is it's really, really chewy and it's going to break down a little bit. So I think what what Dirtworks is actually yeah, doing here a, is just kind of... Yeah, uh, yeah, you stand up there and show here what we kind of... These are dozer whoops again, right? Yeah, and they're, they're, dozer whoops. yeah they're st you you laid down, man. I st <laughs> yeah, they're not as steep as some we've seen, but I yeah, they're definitely not as steep, but they're just as big. Yeah. It'll make a big difference by the end of the night. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's just weird. It's been really weird. You know, talk about a little bit what your thoughts on why they haven't been jumpers and why you know so many rounds they we've been skipping them instead of jumping them. Well, it, it it's been they have cupped out and they've gotten kind of difficult when you start jumping them i think when you start catching the edges of those cups it gets pretty risky but yeah the riders i mean you've seen it too it, it these the whoops started off in the first four or five rounds being just crazy difficult and as crazy we, difficult and as we've worked our way east They've actually calmed down a little bit, they which have. I think a lot of people prefer, but it's, uh, they, they were the big deciding factor in the first four or five rounds. Yeah, and I think another reason why they calm it down is just due, due to the dirt. You yeah. know, obviously yeah. there were some guys complaining, but for the most part, you know, everybody kind of handles their own. I think it's really just they're laying them down more and more because of the dirt and what's yeah. happening because of this East Coast dirt. It just breaks down so much faster. So those whoops get really, really bad cups in them right. and they just get destroyed. So it's hard for us to go through them. Right, so if it's too steep, they tend to get torn up more. more. Yes. And then if they're laid down a little bit, they hold together a little better. So, a lot better. So throughout the night, you know, they can't spend an hour, two hours regrooming the whoops. And know. the whoops yeah. are the hardest part, the yeah. hardest part to groom yeah. by yeah. far. Absolutely. So that's a good reason why to kind of calm them down a bit looking a little bit 
finish line this is what everybody wants to see obviously right here first and foremost uh, and yeah this is this is my favorite part of the track right here for yeah, sure and you realize the riders there going walking away in the orange jacket ktm uniforms there they're the ones where the landing is so, uh, again another jump where you just see stadium seats section four <laughs> 452 453 a scoreboard and you better hope you, you put her and it's you funny it too speed. because this is like the easiest jump on the track for us rock right here exactly you know we yep. we do this first lap it's just it's kind of mind-blowing how good we are you know and sometimes you just don't realize it you don't understand that oh yeah that is like a 65 foot gap that you're just hitting like it's so nonchalant so. oh wait i've read some keyboard warriors <laughs> i've read some comments on people where they do think it's pretty darn easy like they can do I, I'd, I'd love to see like yeah, it'd be yeah. so cool if we got somebody from the stand just yeah. a random person okay you know let's see them hit the finish line and we'll give you a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> see how that, that one went see, That'd go just a draw crazy. a name out of the head huh <laughs> yep here we go Whew, excuse me <laughs> all right off the finish line yep about ready to whew. Up the finish. Oh. And you know, this coming up in this section, I know it doesn't seem much, but you know, a nice long landing here before the little single into a pretty abrupt corner there. You know, it's probably 120, 30 degrees or something, not quite the 180, but it leads on to a section that I have always found at St. Louis, and they seem to have this layout a lot, where I really just a lot of fun watching the guys take all the different lines. Sometimes it gets a little firm. I think some of the Dirtworks guys told us they didn't think it was going to get as hard packed. It won't get quite as slippery as the dirt from previous years. Yeah. But there's always been lots of lines coming out of there, and it's kind of fun seeing the guys get, come out hard and go wide, other people trying to go wide and squaring it up because the next corner is that big wide first corner. So yes. you have two flat corners back to back. Yep. And I, for me, I love it. I like to see it's almost like dirt track racing. Oh, it's 100% like dirt track racing. And the cool thing about it, Brock, is like what you just said, there isn't just one way to do it. Yep. You know, you can go on this outside very, very top. You're gonna see Tomac just jump onto that berm on the very top and just rail this and flat track all the way around where you'll see like a guy like Marvin Moskin who will jump into the corner, slam the brakes on, and he'll almost hit that Rocky Mountain ATV hay bale right there, come up inside and just get a straight line drive, and they'll end up almost exactly the same. And speaking of Tomac, he'll be doing a feed on the pegs. I mean, <laughs> last time in Seattle, there was yeah. a really difficult corner similar to this, right, I coming out to the finish line. And I watched him during press day and actually took some photos, posted it on social media. He had his leg out every time. Yeah. In the race, 26, 27 laps, I think I saw him put his foot down one time in all that time. Yeah. And it got really rutted and got all the way down to the plywood, and yeah. he did it feet on the pegs every time. So amazing balance, amazing skill to be able to hit that line at race speed and just so keep, much his feet, talent. keep his feet on the pegs. And I see other riders trying to adapt and trying to adopt his style. Yeah. And I, they're getting it, but they're not. it's not quite at his level. And I don't know if that's from mountain biking or whatever, but it's just impressive to watch. And I guess that's why he's got a two-race lead, huh? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so. it's, it's very impressive. Like, you know, one of the things we practice at home, you know, doing stand-up stuff, and it's so hard to even get close to how fast, you know, you can do it with your leg out or sitting down. And for Eli Tomac, you know, for you people at home, do a stand-up drill, do a foot peg drill. You'll know what I'm talking about. It is hard to do fast, and Eli Tomac is doing it faster than he would with his leg out. It's just yep. it's so impressive. With no mistakes, yeah. no dabbling. It is impressive, no question about it. And so, that's why he's got the red plate, right? I think that is. So. Yep. Speaking of impressive, thank you for joining us today here at St. Louis, and we will be impressed when you put the seven deuce deuce in the main event, brother. And thank <laughs> you. We'll be cheering you on. So yeah. next week we'll be back. We'll down in Atlanta, right? Yep, yeah, Atlanta, so Atlanta, Georgia, for the uh, Motor Speedway State. But tune in next week. But tonight, watch the Supercross, and thanks for tuning in today. Thanks, guys.